Gotta feed everybody. Gotta feed everybody. Uh huh. I work out. So when I step to the bunk, yeah, this is what I see. Uh -huh. All the hungry cattle are staring at me. I got passion for my plants, and I ain't afraid to show it, show it, show it, show it. I'm farming and I grow it. All right. So welcome to the world of agriculture. Um, what is agriculture? Um, a lot of students don't really know much about farming because our society has become so far removed from the land that we don't even think about where our next meal comes from. We go to the McDonald's, we go to the grocery store, and we don't really think about the process of the raising, slaughtering, and processing of that animal or the growing of that crop and turning it into a final product. So we will investigate that in this unit. Even though you probably don't know much about it, agriculture is a pretty cool topic. In fact, you could say that it's moving. Anyways, farming really takes a, a lot of work. Farmers are really great at what they do. Um, you might even say that farmers are outstanding in their field. That guy's crouching, but he's probably outstanding anyways. So enough of the corny jokes. And let's get on to what agriculture is. What is this thing we have to learn? Um, here's a, a dictionary definition of agriculture. The deliberate modification of the earth's surface through cultivation of plants and rearing of animals to obtain sustenance or economic gain. Wait a minute. That was pretty complicated. So let's try to translate this into English. Let's break agriculture down into its parts. There's two parts to the word agriculture. Agra is Latin for the word field, and culture means something that you care for, something that you take care of. A group of learned behaviors passed on from generation to generation. So it, it really has to do with those kinds of things. It's learned behaviors associated with things like plants, like animals, and sometimes we even forget about it, but this is agriculture too. Fish, the special type of agriculture is called aquaculture um, when it deals with fish. Anyways, agriculture you know, seems simple, but it can be pretty complicated too. It can be a science. There's a lot that goes into the chemicals, the fertilizers, genetic modification, farming techniques. There's a lot of science to farming. So the, most farmers today have a lot of skill and at least have some uh, scientific background or help from scientists out in the, in the farming business. Farming can be an art. Um, a lot of people say that good gardeners have a green thumb. Similar with farmers, there is a little bit of skill and natural talent um, involving manipulating the earth to raise animals and grow crops. And then also, agriculture is a business, definitely. Um, a lot of times, he means to make a living and make a huge profit in some cases. So the goal of agriculture is pretty simple. That can really help explain what agriculture is. The goal of agriculture is to make enough food to survive. Simple enough. More and more complicated, the more people we get on earth, we know that population is growing. Anyways, agriculture, simply put, is growing plants and raising animals on purpose to feed ourselves. We depend on agriculture for our lives, and that's why everyone likes this unit. We need to eat every day. It's a major part of the economy. Agriculture is the most important economic activity in the world. Most of the Earth's surface is dedicated to agriculture. In this map, you can see uh, the green areas are cropland. The browner areas are for raising of livestock. There is a mix of those in some areas as well. Agriculture is an important job for people. Agriculture employs about 45% of the working population. That's almost half of the world. In some parts of Asia and Africa, it's over 80% of people that are farmers. We will look at that in a little bit more detail in this unit. Farming is considered a primary economic activity. It involves harvesting or extracting something directly from the earth. It's also interacting directly with the environment. Here are some agricultural terms, some basic vocabulary that we need to go know before we go much further.
we're on to part two of this presentation. Why is agriculture important? All right, so we need it to survive. It's pretty simple. Rural population will grow from around 7 billion people to about 8.3 billion people by the year 2030. And we are going to try to figure out if we are able to do that. I think we have a couple experts that could talk to us about that. Obviously, we know these two people, they have competing opinions on if we are going to make it that far. Obviously, Malthus says there's no way we're going to be able to keep up with pace of population. At some point in time, we are going to run out of food and have problems, possibly even a apocalyptic situation where many people will die, probably a famine of some sort. Esther Bozra said, hey, that's not going to happen. We uh, are going to always find a way with technology. Necessity is the mother of invention. And so people will always figure out a way to make things work. Why is agriculture important? The decision to settle down and farm is probably the most important moment in human history. It has impacted just about everything. It was a transition from one time period to another. Um, and knowledge of agriculture didn't always lead to people doing it. Some people knew about farming and decided not to, but once people did it, they never stopped. Can't unmake our choice to farm. We've already committed to that. It's sort of like when you squeeze the toothpaste tube and toothpaste comes out. You can't get that toothpaste back in the tube ever again, and that's sort of a good analogy for farming. Why is agriculture important? Through agriculture, people have been able to expand our population. We have grown to 7 billion because we are able to farm. We are able to settle permanently, form civilizations. We are able to then also generate extra food, surplus food. And because we are able to make this surplus food, it created more free time. Now with this free time, humans have done a lot of things. Free time has led to us inventing things to creating cities, to creating armies, to trading with each other. Basically, we went from this to a very developed society. We wouldn't be who we are if it wasn't for farming. So anyways, back to why geography is really important. In geography, obviously, we know that geographers study where and why all the time. So we want to know where is agriculture distributed? What types of agriculture is occurring in what places? We also want to know spatial patterns for how people are doing that. We also want to know why farming practices vary around the world, which is also important. So factors that are going to come into play in determining why farming happens where it does our place, region, location, site, situation, cultural landscape, scale, you know, all the good stuff we've been talking about all year long. Other things that come into play with farming are environmental determinism and possibilism, as well as globalization versus local diversity. Geographic questions that are associated with agriculture might be, where is agriculture taking place? What type of agriculture is taking place? Why is it taking place where it is? What is the impact of agriculture on the earth? What is the impact of agriculture on people? What is the impact of agriculture on other businesses? So these are all kinds of things that geographers might uh, investigate and try to find answers to. Part three, what should we grow and how should we grow it? Farming obviously involves lots of choices. Farmers have to make choices like that too. So agriculture can look really different. Gotta feed everybody. Uh-huh, I work outside. Gotta feed everybody. Gotta feed everybody. Gotta feed everybody. Uh-huh, I work outside. When I step to the bunk, yeah. this is what I see. Uh -huh. All the hungry cattle are staring at me. I got passion for my plants and I ain't afraid to show it. Show it, show it, show it. I'm farming and I grow it. So as you can see, agriculture is going to look different in different places. Very different. So farmers make those choices that I mentioned. What animal or crop should I grow or raise? Where should I raise or grow it? How should I raise or grow it? Even in The Walking Dead, Herschel said it was my farm, my barn, and my say. So if he decided to put zombies in his barn, he could darn well do it. So anyways, agriculture depends on 
the Y of where constantly. We look at farmers having comparative advantage. That is a term we haven't really discussed yet. It means when one region is relatively more efficient at making a product compared to other regions. So when we look at comparative advantage in the real world, we look at people in warmer climates, for example, having better baseball players. You look at California and Texas and Florida, they're able to play baseball year round. So those players have a comparative advantage over people in Wisconsin or Minnesota where there's snow for several months during the year and they can't go outside and play baseball. So certain farmers are gonna have certain advantages over others, depending on where they are in the world. Agriculture is going to depend again on the why of where and factors that involve uh, agriculture decisions will be environment, culture, and economic considerations. So let's look at climate first. Climate regions are based on long-term averages in precipitation and temperature. Remember weather is just short-term averages or short-term conditions in precipitation and temperature. Climate is long-term and that's what we're really looking at when we look at agriculture. Climate also brings up the possibilism versus environmental determinism debate. Obviously, anything is really possible. We could grow tomatoes in very cold weather climates by growing things inside. It's just going to cost us a little bit more. So that's where possibilism comes in. If you have the money and resources, you can make it happen. But the climate does have a big impact on agriculture. Here's some maps on wheat and rice production. You can see that rice is very common in tropical and wet areas of the world. Wheat is going to be found in more moderate climates, the Midwest and the United States. Livestock also tends to be raised in drier climates as well. So climate is going to have an impact. Climate was classified by the German climatologist Vladimir Koppen. He made a climate map in 1928. And the map uses six letters to divide the world into six major climate regions based on average precipitation and temperature. The borders are going to represent transition zones where climate fluctuates between this, these zones. Um, so these lines aren't really hard boundaries. You have a mixture of climates when you get into those boundary areas. Also, um, side fact, Vladimir Koppen looks a heck of a lot like Uncle Sai. Vladimir Koppen died just shortly before Uncle Sai was born. Coincidence? I don't know. Anyways, so Koppen made this uh, climate map. We have other people that, that have modified the maps, and you can find those in textbooks. We can actually even look at climate and agriculture. If we put the maps next to each other, we should begin to be seeing some patterns here. You should try it for yourself. Obviously, these two pictures are right out of the textbook, so you can try to look at how climate affects agriculture. This map is used by gardeners, typically, in the United States. This map is about hardiness, which is the ability for a plant to make it from one year to the next in different climate zones. This is for perennial plants, typically. In Wisconsin, we are going to end up being in zone 5, which is right in this region here, obviously. Some plants are going to make it, some plants aren't. Physical environment can affect the choices that we make with agriculture. Components of the physical environment are going to include things like soil and water and sunlight and the slope of the land. That's going to help farmers decide what type of agriculture that they are going to use. We're also going to look at arable land. Can you farm on it? So you'll see these maps in the book as well. So, so far we've looked at things that involve environmental determinism. We're going to look at some components of possibilism. Why would a farmer make some other different decision? And we are going to see that farmers can base their ideas on culture and tradition. Culture and technology can definitely affect agriculture. If we look at religion, religion can be definitely be a factor in what types of animals people want to raise. For example, Hindus don't want to eat steak or cows, and Jews aren't going to eat pork. Jews and Muslims. Customs can also be a factor. If we look at the fact that Americans, we won't eat horse meat even though it's supposed to be very nutritious and actually very delicious. But in the United States we have this history of cowboys and riding horses and so they are seen as pets and companions 
and not meet. Another factor can be government subsidies or government policy. A government subsidy is when the government pays farmers to grow things like corn and that can influence agriculture. Supply and demand is also an important factor in agriculture. At a global scale, farmers are looking to make the most money that they can. They're looking at factors like land cost and how close are they to the market and where are they going to find workers and technology and startup money. Those are all things that make farmers' decisions when you look at um, economic reasons.